watching the film for the first time? You know, uh, I got to say, as a writer, you, uh, you know, I'm, I'm always very wary of director's cuts and of, of seeing the movie because, you know, as you're writing it, you've already seen the movie in your head and, and it's, the budget is, you know, a trillion dollars and there's no way it can be made. So when you go in to see the director's version of it, it's, it's almost always a disappointment because you, you it can't be what you saw in your head. I, so I walked into the, the new moon screening and I was very wary. About 10 minutes in the movie, I just started smiling. I was, I was like, wow, I get to put my name on that. I mean, I, I have to say, I'm, I'm more proud of this than anything I've done in the past. I mean, it's just, uh, it was really exciting. Well, what's been the reaction for you? I mean, obviously, fandom seems, again, I'm an outsider to the Twilight phenomenon. I'm not the, the diehard that a lot of people are, but what has been, for you, the struggle of maintaining, you know, finding the right voice for the movie, versus the fans' expectations, versus there's no way, there's no way to adapt a book into a perfect movie. Because there's just no way. And no matter who you are, no matter how brilliant you are, you, you have to miss stuff. Things have to be cut. So how do you balance that, and do you feel that pressure? Uh, yeah, I mean, you, I mean, the, the, I probably said this last time we talked, I mean, the essential thing in adapting the book, if you've captured, you're never going to have every scene and every line of dialogue, obviously, things that play in a book don't play in a movie, but if you take the audience on the same emotional journey they went on for the book, then you have, I think, captured the book on, on film, I mean, that's, that's the objective. And so then the specific scenes and, and lines of dialogue don't, don't, aren't, aren't as important. I mean, you have to keep, keep the ones that take the characters on that journey, but you could fill in and, and condense and everything in between. Well, now, one of the things about the film, again, I haven't read the book, is that Edward apparently is not a big part of the book. He leaves. But obviously with Robert Pattinson's worldwide success, you have to keep him in the movie. Could you talk about who came up with the idea of this kind of, you know, the way you guys captured it in the movie, which I thought was actually really well done. Mm -hmm. um, I totally thought that it was a very good uh, way of keeping him in the movie. Oh, who, who came up with that? Well, it's interesting. I mean, I think I, I probably was the first one having been the writer. I mean, uh, so it was in the book, she hears Edward's voice. And actually, in the book, he doesn't disappear. I mean, because she's hearing his voice in her mind, he's very present. I mean, not physically, but he's very present in, in the book. So for me, it seemed like a pretty obvious way to go to make that, rather than hearing his, his voice, actually seeing him. And um, I, I really couldn't uh, figure out how that was actually going to look on screen. Uh, tried a couple different things, you know, the, the of, oh, he's this ethereal thing, or he's jump cutty, and all, everything I came up with was, you know, look, I'm not a special effects person. So I, I basically just wrote Edward Appears as an apparition and gave it to Chris and, and said, you know, have at it, you know, because he obviously is the visual stylist. I, mean, I, I, think, that what, I think what he did is exactly right. Uh, I think the, the end result. I thought the, the effect of the wave like it was almost like sand. Yes. It was, it was really well done. The it was beautifully done. I, and I uh, I knew he would be able to just realize that and he, you know. Okay. <laughs> um, now, what's interesting about this movie is that you guys are promoting New Moon, but Eclipse is already wrapped. So for you, um, have you? the big question is, have you seen any of Eclipse? I have not seen any of Eclipse, uh, no. Uh, in fact, I only got to go up and visit once, and it was uh, I arrived after they finished shooting for the day. So no, I've seen actually uh, less of Eclipse, than, even though I've actually been more involved in Eclipse, uh, as I've been able to do all the changes and you know production changes and such, uh, I have not actually seen it. So uh, I'm very much looking forward to it. Um, as an outsider to the franchise, again, I don't mean to keep on saying that, but how close is the movie to the book and with Eclipse? How close? Like, I guess what I'm saying is for, for fans out there who, you know, are diehards or not diehards, um, how much changes or how much could you add of yourself to, like, could you talk a little bit about the differences or the similarities or whatever? Um, you know, it's it's hard to, I've, it's gone to a place now where I no longer know where Stephanie's voice ends and mine begins. You know, it's, it's kind of been a bit of a mind meld because I've, I've you know, in adapting the book, I've, I've tried to get into, uh, you know, become a part of the mythology and really uh, adopt that world. Um, so I, I it's oftentimes someone will ask, well, you know, 
what was in the book that you brought forward. It's like, you know, I honestly can't remember half the time, you know, what I invented and what was in the book. Um, and a lot of times what I've invented is, is born out, it's not in the book, but it's sort of born out of the book. So um, I think, you know, I, I, I become, a, you know, slightly more inventive as I go along. Uh, but uh, it's all connected. It, is, you know, you, it has to be connected to the storytelling of the book. So I, I think fans will walk away from, from both movies feeling like they've seen the book. Uh, but I think there's, I also got the opportunity to, to uh, bring my own uh, uh, point of view to it. I think I think maybe one of the ways in which I uh, probably you know the subtle ways for uh, you know in, in a book uh, you can have a character be reactive. You, great great novels are uh, you know many of them are, have a character being reactive. In a movie, that's not uh, that's really not an option. Your your lead character has to drive the story uh, by the choices she makes, by the actions she takes. So that was one of the the primary shifts. And that's very tricky because you still need it to be Bella. You need it to be the character of Bella that you, you know and love from the books. And yet she has to be driving things in a way that um, uh, she, she wasn't in the novel. So that's kind of one of the, I think, you, know, you may not even notice it, and hopefully you don't. But you will, I, I think, find her to be a slightly stronger character or more act, proactive character in the movies. Uh, and that's just a necessity of storytelling on the screen. Um, I was talking to some people who were involved at, at Summit, and uh, no one is willing to tell me anything on record about Breaking Dawn. Well, what they're saying is they've been so busy with New Moon and Eclipse that it hasn't really entered their mind. Uh, I, have a call. I feel a publicist behind me. <laughs> um, my, my thing is, though, uh, obviously, the, the hypothetically speaking, fans have told me that the fourth book is going to be a challenge to do on the movie screen. Mm -hmm. Again, I'm not saying you have started or not started or whatever, but you've obviously read it. You yeah. obviously are thinking about it because let's be honest here, they're happy with you. You've written the second and third movie and I would, a betting man would say you'd be doing the fourth. But so I guess my question for you is, is do you think that if you were to, to do it, that you could take that more might have to be changed with the fourth book or because you know, and again, I haven't read it, but people have just told me that it's more of a challenge. If I were to be doing it, um, there, uh, there are certain things that would be a challenge. It's more, it's more about what probably doesn't have to be on screen. You know, I mean, it's always about it's always about paring down and in some cases expanding. And so I think. Um, I think there's a, a great movie in there, and uh, it's really about picking and choosing, you know. But again, things that play in a book don't necessarily play uh, in a movie, you know. Chapters and chapters of Bella being depressed is incredibly engaging in that, in that book. It, you can't do that for all that long in a movie. So it's that kind of thing that I think would apply to any kind of adaptation. And what's your feeling? Um, th this is just your personal preference, but a lot of people are talking, or the rumor has been that you guys or Summit might want to do two movies because it's the last for Breaking Dawn. Uh, what's your feeling on that? Do you think that's something that do you have a personal opinion on that either way? I'm going to reserve uh, that. I'm going to just wait and see how all that plays out. <laughs> okay, sure. My last question for you. Obviously, uh, Twilight has been eating up all your time. Have you been able to write other things, or has it been Twilight 24-7? It's been Twilight and Dexter 24-7. I, I go back and forth. I, for the last two years, I've sort of spent five days a week on Dexter and two days a week on, on t one Twilight or the other, and it's been a back and forth and back and forth. So right at this precise moment, Dexter is wrapped for the season. And I had the month of October off, and uh, now it's kind of like you know looking at whatever the next project is. I was gonna, I know I, I have to wrap with you. I was gonna mention Dexter and how much of a huge fan I am of the oh, show. Thank you. And when I spoke to you last time, I did not realize the extent of your involvement in that show. <laughs> I've heard that this season, um, who told me? One of the cast members said to me that it ends on a real finale this year, mm -hmm. where it carries over into next year. Mm -hmm. Can you comment on that? Um, we always want to, every season, we want, we want to, uh, you know, end on something that brings audiences back and to give ourselves a story, you know, something to jump off of for the next season. You, you know, you, you don't want to have to start in.